Oh, g'day, Great Sun Ancient Miniature Man here, and I've got an exciting unboxing today of some V&V miniatures. I am extra excited about these guys. I've been hanging out for them for a long time, admiring them online, and thinking they were just a bit expensive for me and a bit overindulgent for me for a long time. So I haven't bought them, but um, recently with all the trouble for Ukraine, given it's a Ukrainian company, I thought it'd be a nice way to kind of support their economy in some small way. Um, so I contacted the guys and found them very helpful and uh, they sent me these figures uh, over two months ago so it took a little while to get here but the postage was very reasonable and um, despite the fact the figures themselves are quite expensive they did uh, send me a couple of a couple of extra ones um, to review so they've got here finally let's pull them out and have a look at what's in the box do the unboxing I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do about painting up the various ones. I might do separate little videos for each of the different groups. So they come in these really cute little boxes. They're tiny boxes. They're about the size of a pack of cards, or even slightly smaller. So you've got the Carthaginian Command box. There's four figures in there. Roman Command here. This one is um, Hannibal on horse. I'll pull that out in a minute. And I've got actually two boxes of these little Liberian guys, so I thought I could do one set as um, Scutari and one as Seatrati. Let's have a look. So they seem to be quite well respected, these figures. Every review I've seen has been very positive about them. So they are a bit more expensive than your average plastic or resin figure. They come in little bags, uh, each individual figure, and um, have all the components there they seem to be very crisp they describe themselves as resin miniatures I find resin sometimes a bit soft and I don't really like the feel of it but these are quite hard they're yeah, quite similar to you know, hard Victrix uh, or War Games Atlantic kind of um, figures my first impression is they're very crisp they don't seem to have any mold lines to speak of that need cleaning off and the detail does look quite superb. This Hannibal himself. Got a few components to assemble for each one. And they all come with stands. Textured stands. The cloak looks nice. It fits on beautifully there. So I think they're going to be fantastic. This is my impression. I'll just show you scale wise with. And Victrix ones are almost exactly the same. Hmm. So that's him, the Hannibal on the horse. There's four Carthaginian cavalry you can get. And quite a, quite a big range of figures, in fact. So the Romans, they have all the usual suspects: the Velites, the Hastati, the uh, the Principes, and the Triarii, um, and then the command ones. And there are, I did contact them and just discuss some aspects of their, what they're up to and so on, because they're still putting out new figures, and um, they do have a plan to produce sort of bigger box sets discounted once they've completed all their Carthaginian and all their Roman um, series, so you could buy them all together and get a bit of a discount, which will make it much more cost effective uh, to get such beautiful figures. Shields really well done very textured you can see all those little bolts on the outside and they've got um it's a battle scars in the surface of the shields and quite a few little components to each figure and the plastic base with some nice sort of sandy texture on the, the base of that so that looks pretty cool um quite sure how to do this it's going to be a bit dull watching every single little bag get opened and <laughs> closed up again so maybe I will just give you a quick look at them through the plastic and then we'll I'll assemble them and uh, show them painted that might be more worthwhile look at that guy the cape around his shoulders he looks cool this one too hmm I think I'll do that so that's the Romans look excellent 
Iberians next. These are a little bit different and they come with, I think, with two shields each. So, so you can make them as, as the Skutari or the Seathati. Yeah, there's a little buckler type shield there. Looking good. That's allegedly Ukrainian music in the background. Pretty amazing they can still keep working and producing and they're doing more ranges. They've got um, other, lots, of, lots of Vikings and Dark Ages, Dark Age Irish and uh, so on, as well as all the ancient ranges. And they do not only 28mm but some bigger ones as well. So we'll have a look at their website. If you're a bit reluctant to, to sort of risk buying them from Ukraine, there are um, suppliers elsewhere in the UK and Germany. There's a few on directly on their website anyway. I think there's one in Spain. None in the southern hemisphere, sadly. And here come who are these guys. Oh yeah, the Carthaginians. So that's what they look like there. They look to be very nice. They just look so crisp. Let me show you this guy. Like their armor. It's amazing. Certainly what I've read about them and heard other people describe how they just so beautifully cast. I say my impressions are totally consistent with that so far. Might be Hamilcar, father of Hannibal Barker. Let's look at him, look at his beautiful um, scale mail. Head might need a little bit of tidying up to stick it on. Nice big cloak there, and yeah, it just clips on perfectly. Chop off the edges of those arms to get them on. Whoops. Nice Carthaginian standard, very slightly bent there. Just need some hot water to straighten that out, but otherwise it looks really good. Mm. So yeah, that's my first impression is beautiful, and I'm gonna put some together and um, and then I'll at least show them on this video. I may then do of each series a separate video. All right, all the best. Right, here we are. I've completed the uh, Iberian Scutari. Uh, I just want to point out a few little um, issues or features with the kits uh, that you need to be aware of. So firstly, it's important to have a few tools. So for example, one of these um, fine, uh, fine little hand drills because you find that the right hand of each figure comes with a hilt and a couple of options for um, for sword blade so you can probably just see that there's a tiny little hollow there and you've got the sword blade which can go in but it's not quite big enough really to snugly fit in there so I've just found you really need to drill that out a little bit to um, get the sword to fit in securely then the other thing you really want is one of these pairs of side cutting uh, pliers type things because again when they've been cast they're sort of the sprue from which they've been detached often has these little um, connections still there so quite easy to snip off with these but anything else a bit more solid and less accurate than these you could easily damage the uh, components because they're a little bit on the brittle side that's one small feature I found um, with them. Not a big problem, but I did find one guy, this guy, I had him on a stand while I was painting him, elevated stand about this high, and it fell over and he snapped off at the ankles, and then I found it quite hard to reattach his uh, ankles to his legs, so I ended up having to drill a little hole up his leg and put a piece of wire in to connect the foot and the ankle to the rest of the leg, 
Um, it, uh, it worked out okay in the end, but it was just a little bit tricky. So that's one very slight, um, kind of not a criticism, but just a feature of the type of material they're made from. They are a little bit brittle. Um, however, the overall kind of uh, description of them would be elegant, I think. They're beautiful figures with amazing um, definition to their uh, or sort of accuracy to their sculpting and definition to their features. So uh, fantastic things like, you might be able to see the, uh, the cardiothorax there with the big uh, sort of wolf head on it. Uh, just heaps of little minor details um, more than you get in other figures like this guy he's got a helmet and there's just these little straps under his chin on his neck there which just uh, add a bit to the, the immersion and the quality uh, quite beautiful so I think they're um, amazing figures really and some of the best that I've got in my collection um, just want to tell you a little bit about the company so V&V that stands for uh, Valeri, who seems to be the main sort of business guy, he's certainly the one who I corresponded with, and then Vladislav, who's the main sculptor. I did ask them a few questions, so I wondered if they'd actually used um, computer um, assisted design for this, but they say no, it's all hand done. Um, uh, I uh, asked them about the size of their company, and they said before COVID and the war, uh, the company had seven workers. Now just me, that is Valeri and the sculptor, it's uh, Vladislav and web designer, photographer and uh, painters outsourced or freelance. Um, I asked them about perhaps doing bigger kits which could sell a little bit of a discount and uh, the answer to that was that we've already thought of that. Um, we need to make our sets to close these themes. Now already, almost ready, Roman Bellites and Carthaginian Elephant. So this was about two months ago, so in fact since then they have released the Roman Velites and uh, I'm told the Carthaginian elephants may even be out at the end of this month, that is um, September 2022, so coming soon. Not only that, they put out two more sets of, um, of Arab, uh, one of Arab archers and one of Arab cavalry in the past couple of months, so they're, despite the war, they're hard at work not only putting out what they've already made but producing more lines, which is amazing. I did ask a bit about the impact of the Russian invasion and I'll just read out um, the reply from Valeri here. So I asked uh, whether the war had affected them and it, he said, of course the war has had a negative impact on our company. In the first weeks of the war we almost did no work uh, because there could be up to eight air alarms a day, the same at night. The second stage it was necessary to psychologically get used to the new reality and restore business ties because many companies that supplied us with consumables had moved their businesses to a calmer region or were under occupation or were dead. We plan to launch the production of our figures in metals too, but for now we've postponed this indefinitely. Also, since the start of the war, many of our customers have supported us despite the fact that they did not demand their orders be shipped we have 100% fulfilled our obligations to them and we want to thank everyone who supported us and continues to support us in the future with best wishes Valeri V&V Miniatures so uh, I think it's quite inspiring really that they're working producing more and uh, able to get this kind of quality in such difficult circumstances so I hope you like these guys as much as I do and if you have any inclination to pick some up certainly you do so I can pretty much guarantee you won't be disappointed the only people I would suggest maybe they're not ideal for is perhaps young um, modelers people who haven't got a lot of experience in putting together these kits just because they are that little bit brittle and obviously the price range means you really want to know what you're doing um, to make the best of them but uh, if you are in that boat and you can afford them, um, as I say, they're superb and it's obviously a good cause to buy from them. So that's it for the uh, 
Iberians, but I'll be back with the Carthaginians and the Romans at a later date. I hope you like them. Um, one other thing before I go, I'm planning to do a giveaway of a sprue of um, War Games Atlantic Goths new uh, kit that's out, just come out. Um, so if you want to be in the running for that, please uh, put a comment in. The first 10 comments on this video will go into a, a draw for the next video, or maybe the one on the it might be the one after um, where I'm going to do the uh, War Game Atlantic Goths. Um, going to a draw there to win a sprue of them uh, to be shipped anywhere in the world free of charge. So, got to be a subscriber and you got a comment, and uh, I will see you soon. Bye.